Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we'll show you the overwinter habitats we set up in our research lab this season for three species of wasps, including German yellow jacket, European paper wasp, and northern paper wasp. We'll show you how we captured each species in the field, what we observed day to day up to mid-December of 22, and how long they survived in captivity. This episode will cover the time period of fall into winter of 2022 from about October 19th up until about December 11th of 2022. So here on October 19th, it was a beautiful fall day. Uh, the trees were starting to change color and it was breezy that day and we were working on a relocated nest that had ended for the season. We were doing a forensic analysis on that nest. Inside that nest, as you may recall from previous videos, we found a queen that it was either a hibernating queen or it was a queen that had been born in that nest and was unable to get out of that nest. We took that queen and we put her into a winter habitat and that began the Vespula germanica over winter habitat that we then added about another dozen wasps to. We set up a feeding station in the field lab and over the next three weeks we started capturing Vespula germanica or German yellow jacket specimens that we could bring into the overwinter habitat along with the queen. It was a very simple feeding station, just a plastic tray filled up with cola, which is just a sugar water, and the yellow jackets responded very well to that and kept coming there each day. And ultimately from this feeding station and similar feeding stations, we captured about a dozen of these German yellow jackets. At the same time, we had 10 or 12 Polistes diminula, which are European paper wasps. We already had that set up from about August of 2022, and we'll be overwintering them right into 23. In the Germanica habitat, the German yellow jackets, here you see the queen getting a little aggressive with one of the workers we had added to the habitat. Uh, she's trying to kick the worker out of the honey station where she comes down to feed. But uh, the workers were pretty tough. They held their own. And they all eventually learned to get along pretty well in there. There was not very much aggression noted. Ultimately, they began to establish their own hierarchy and dominant structures. They started doing trophallaxis, which is mouth-to-mouth -mouth fluid exchange. And that's how they communicate and, and establish their dominant structures and so forth. Every day or two, we'd step out to the feeding station and capture a new specimen to bring into the habitat. So while they're in the feeding station, that's the easiest way to collect your samples. So here you see a yellow jacket. It's busy feeding on the sweet carbohydrate fluids that you put into the feeding station. So in this case, that's root beer. So you just wait for them to come over and begin feeding. In this case, we're just using a jar with a lid. You put it over the wasp, it'll fly up into the container. And you have your specimen for your habitat. Here you see Vespula germanica engaged in trophallaxis, and they'll do this periodically throughout the day. Usually one wasp will solicit fluids from another, the other one will produce the fluids that the other will then drink. And this is very common behavior among many species of social wasps. And it's always interesting to see how wasps brought in from the field from different colonies, most likely they all happen to end up at the feeder. It's interesting to see how they interact when you put them all into one habitat. November 2nd, 2022, just captured a German yellow jacket at one of our feeding stations. We've now introduced five German wasps, that's the Vespula Germanica German yellow jackets, into the same habitat where we had the Queen Germanica. It appears the Queen has since died she went underneath one of these shelter items and never came back out, so we assume she's dead. And we'll confirm that later. So in the overwintering habitats, the only food we usually give them, any of the species of wasps, is honey, as you can see here, and also water. So they'll have a honey dish and a water dish all the time. Every once in a while we'll give them a piece of fruit as well, but it's mostly honey and water. And with our casual overwinter experiments, we did not mark these wasps. Sometimes you can mark them with different paint colors and whatnot to know who's who and how long each one of them lives exactly in captivity. We're not doing that in this particular type of study. 
We're just doing a casual observation of how long the species in general will live. November 2nd, 2022. This is a habitat set up for some Vespula germanica wasps. There's currently at least three still alive in this habitat out of five workers that we put in. Three of the workers still survive and are very active. We don't know how old they were when they were captured at the feeding station outside in our field lab, but we'll monitor them and see how many days they survive inside this habitat. November 4th, 2022, we set up a feeding station with apple cider. Mostly black flies today and other insects, but not a lot of wasps. We've had one customer, what's this wasp here? It's like a little German wasp. It seems to reside in this hole underneath the shingle. Hangs out there, comes down and visits once in a while, but otherwise, mostly uh, not interested. So we're gonna collect this specimen here and add it to our inside research lab habitat where there's a couple other Germanica specimens already. We'll let this one live out its life inside the habitat. Most of the leaves have fallen now. Colder weather's coming, but today's pretty mild. It's about 68 degrees in upstate Indiana. Beautiful day. But as you can see, not much population at all now. So basically, most of the Live wasps have probably died off in the cold nights. So there's not much left in the neighborhood for population of yellow jackets. So we have our next specimen active in the temporary container. And now the trick is to open up the habitat and get our specimen in there with the others without letting the others fly out and without letting this one escape. So typically you would wait until sundown and then all the others in the habitat already will be super mellow. Uh, the one in the temporary container will calm down at night and sometimes we have time for that sometimes we don't so there are times in daylight when we have to deal with a transfer and that's the kind of thing we're going to do today now as you can see right now that might be a bit of a challenge because we have one right on the front door of the habitat and that will cause grief when we're trying to get the new one in there so we have to wait until that one gets out of the way and then once that one's in the back of the habitat, instead of the front, then we can insert the next container inside the habitat and do the transfer. So we just put the container inside. And as you can see, our newest member of the club just climbed out and now we can remove the temporary container from the habitat. So at this point now, over the last few days, we've collected just a few specimens of Vespula germanica like this one. And in this habitat now, we have four that remain alive, including the new one. The others have died. Here in our feeding station, we've attracted a Polistes wasp. 
Looks like it may be a Fuscatus. We'll have to capture it to check it out more closely. And we like to overwinter that one. And the way we do this, We wait till it's busy feeding like this. It's distracted, in other words. Then we take a container and we place it over the wasp. Typically they'll fly up into it. And then you seal it and you got your sample or your specimen to overwinter. So let's try that, see how it goes. Okay. The polistes are pretty mellow, so they're not very difficult to capture in that way. We just captured a specimen we're going to overwinter. Looks like polistes fuscatus. It was attracted to the feeding station we set up to attract specimens for overwintering. This wasp looks like a female Fuscatus, which hopefully will be a gyne, which means a fertile inseminated female who we can overwinter and then maybe she'll make a nest in the spring, or she may even make a nest if we make conditions right inside the habitat during the winter. So she appears to be a pretty healthy, decent specimen uh, it's probably very hungry this time of year. If she's not an inseminated gyne, then she's just a female worker, probably. And she will not be able to start a nest, but we'll see. But we'll set up a habitat today. And the way we do that to begin with is we lay down a piece of cardboard inside the habitat, cut it to size, drop it in that way as the bottom of the Habitat becomes soiled with waste and food products and whatever. Over time, you can pull it out and exchange it for a new one anytime you like without making the actual glass bottom of the habitat very dirty. And that just makes it easier. So we're going to cut that to size and we'll get back to you. That's a little bit snug, but that'll do. Then we we'll take our polistes wasp and we set her inside with some food and water. We have a little bit of honey in a bottle cap. That'll be the food for the wasp. And we have a little bit of water in the other cap. Then we're gonna introduce our specimen wasp. Very nice looking wasp. Polistes fuscatus female. It's still a little bit starved and dehydrated, so it'll need to eat a little bit before it can get enough energy to act pretty normally. This is a honey stick. Let's see if we can get her to eat some honey. They normally respond to that really quickly. Looks like she's pretty hungry. What we wanted to do is understand that food is here in the dish. So we try to lead that, lead it to the food. There you go. That's where you want to be eating. So once they understand that the dish is food, because the dish is not a natural thing they would seek out for food. They'd look for flowers and nectar, so you have to teach them where the food is sometimes. 
They'll discover it on their own eventually, but when they need a lot of food right away, when they're found in a semi-starved state like this one was, they need food right away. They, so we just sort of help them along and train them where the food dish is. While she's getting acclimated, we'll go ahead and fill up the habitat with some comfort items, similar to what we have down here in the habitats for the Germanica wasps and in the habitat for the overwintering Dominula wasps, which are also polistes, like our new friend here. So we'll go ahead and get that taken care of after we heat treat some items to put in there with her. So what we're gonna do is cook all that stuff, get any bugs and parasites and so forth killed off. We usually set this for a couple hundred degrees or more and bake it for let's say 30 minutes. That gives us plenty of assurance that anything alive on those items, sticks and bark and the little house that we put in the habitats occasionally is killed off. That's bacteria, pathogens, wood boring insects, parasites, anything like that. November 4th, 2022. Up on the eaves there, you see a Polistes dominula wasp. So we're gonna capture that and put it into our dominula habitat to overwinter. I'm just gonna use a typical container. It's pretty simple to do. And we'll take that into the habitat that we've already set up for the dominula. This looks like a male dominula, which will be handy here. We may be able to mate this male with the females we have in the habitat. So it would be nice to get a male inside that habitat just in case. Seems to be healthy. You can tell it's a male because it's got a lot more yellow on its face than most of the females. And it's got a longer abdomen, extra segment on the ab abdomen that the females don't have. So let's take it in and introduce it to the habitat. So here's our new male Polistes dominula. We're gonna put that wasp into this habitat. This has already been set up for Polistes dominula. We have some in it now. You can see a cluster of them on the ceiling of the habitat here. The others are hiding out underneath the bark pieces. It's where they go in the evening after the direct sun has gone away for the day. Okay, to introduce this wasp into the habitat, you just have to make sure that they're calm for the day, which they are. Uh, the other wasps that are inside this habitat are already calmed down. They're, there's no more direct sun hitting the habitat, so they're calm for the night. So it's no problem to open up the door. <coughs> Polistes are super mellow, uh, especially this time of year. And so you can just sort of set this inside and the wasp will come out and then you're good. And then we can watch as the wasp gets acclimated. And what we'll do, we're gonna try to hand feed this wasp, give it a little extra energy, because it just came in from the wild and it's November 4th, 2022. So it's probably close to starvation at this point. So we're gonna give them a little head start with feeding. As you can see, they immediately come to honey because they're pretty close to starvation this time of year out in the wild. So they definitely need some food. And they're very interested in eating. So we're gonna bring it down to show it where the food is. Here you go, buddy, here's a whole dish for you. There you go. Okay. So once you get it acclimated toward where the food is, it has a better chance of getting set up in the habitat. There you go, as you can see, this wasp is very hungry, very much in need of nutrition. So we're just gonna go ahead and let that happen for a while.
Meanwhile, the females in the cage are up here in the top of the habitat. And they're also down underneath the bark. Down here, there's several. There's about a dozen of them in this habitat right now. You can't see them because most of them are hiding out. But when there's sun shining directly on the habitat, you can see them. It's one of the females now. So we'll just let them get acclimated here and get some food for a while. And we'll check back in with this one later. Looks like our new friend just found the honey dish with no problem. So it looks like he'll be settling in just fine. Our male Polistes dominula had a good long honey feeding and then went right up to join the ladies. So he's currently up here. So now we have the heat treated natural items in the habitat. Our Polistes fuscatus female is happily wandering at this point, exploring the habitat. It appears she's getting pretty well acclimated. November 6, 2022, beautiful day, flock of migrating birds, so much life. We have a feeding station today with just some Sprite type soda in the feeder and that attracted a German male, Vespula Germanica male. So we'll go ahead and add this male to our Germanica habitat that we're overwintering in the research lab. And we'll see how long his life span is in that environment. So here's our male Vespula Germanica that was just captured at the feeding station in the field lab outside. We brought him inside to put him into the habitat we have set up already for the Vespula Germanica female workers that we've captured at the same feeding station. There's currently four live workers in the habitat. They're all female. And I doubt these are queens and therefore probably are not fertile to create future queens. But we're going to add the male to this habitat just to have a male in there and see how long he survives in captivity. So right now it's a little bit too busy in the Germanica cage. The females are very busy flying around in the direct sun. So because of that, we're going to add our male in there later after the females settle down for the night. So for now, we just put a little uh, soda, which is just a sugary drink, uh, Sprite, into a bottle cap. And we'll just let the male feed on that until he goes into the main habitat. Once he finds that, you'll notice he'll drink right away because he'll be very thirsty and very hungry because out in the environment, um, they are starting to starve to death this time of year, which would usually kill them off. But we'll try to keep him alive for a little longer here and see how he does in captivity. So you can tell this is a male Vespula Germanica because he has long droopy antenna and he has an extra body segment, an extra length on the body segment in his abdomen. So you can tell he's a little bit longer, his antenna are longer, and that's the best way to distinguish the male from the female Vespula Germanica. He seems to be healthy, and you may call these drones also. 
Here you can see he found this sprite in his temporary container and then we moved them on into the habitat with the other Vespula dramatica. Seemed like he got along just fine in there. Didn't seem to have any conflict with the females in the group. Unfortunately, there was no queen left alive in the habitat. Only these female workers, you see one here having some honey. But uh, there was no one for the male to mate with. So we were not able to uh, create a nesting arrangement here. November 6, 2022. We set up a feeding station today. Captured another Germanica specimen in here. Looks like a female worker. There's also a number of honeybees here today and we're just letting them drink. Always happy to see honeybees around. You can see the honeybee, the difference in coloration. Honeybees are a little fuzzier. They're a little more tan in color than yellow. And you see the long tongue they use to drink with. That long tongue doesn't exist on a wasp. So that's the difference between our yellow jacket here. You see the coloring is quite yellow. And if you see the coloring on this guy, you see how he's tan? He's got the long tube to drink with. And then over here, we have our Germanica wasp. Entirely different coloring, very yellow face, different body shape. So we're going to take the wasp and put it inside the habitat today. So here's our new Germanica specimen that we just picked up today, November 6, 2022. We're going to move it today into this habitat that has several other Germanica. That's the German yellow jacket or Vespula Germanica. They're in there today, but they're relaxing now that the sun has passed their cage. So they've gone underneath their shelter items, like the bark and the coconut shell you see here. So what we're going to do is take this new one and transfer it into the cage today. Once it flies out of the jar, we'll take the jar back out. And we're good. And the new roommate can get acclimated and hang out here. And you see it immediately begins looking for something to eat. So once it finds the food, which is the honey here and the water here, it'll be good to go. Meanwhile, next door to the Vespula Germanica habitat, we have the Polistes habitat. This is the Polistes drinking honey, which is the main food item we keep inside the habitats, regardless of species. Here's more Polistes dominula. As the day warmed up and got sunnier, they tend to come out and start feeding and flying around and grooming and getting more active. This habitat had already been set up since August of 22 when we captured these Polistes, most of them anyway. A couple of them came in later than that. But most of these had been in here since mid-August. And they overwinter really well. They're very adaptable, very hardy species. So I'm sure we'll have them for many, many months. It would not be unusual to see these Polistes surviving for over a year, at least. If you're new to wasp keeping in general and you want to attempt to keep a species alive in, in a habitat environment inside a research lab or inside your home as pets, what have you, uh, the Dominula are a good place to start because they're so adaptable and just they survive. And just their overall behavior, I like to call it their personality, is so mellow. Uh, they're very, very calm compared to the Vespula Germanica, which are the German yellow jackets, or really any species of yellow jacket. Compared to them, these Polistes are super mellow, very laid back. They make great study subjects.
Here we use the macro lens and slow down the footage a little bit to catch some of the Germanica. These are the Vespula Germanica, German yellow jackets, flying and hanging out in their habitat. At normal speed, they always seem so hyperactive, but when you slow them down, they're pretty graceful, and they watch very carefully where they move. It looks really at normal speed like they're just bouncing all over the cage, but if you watch their head, their head movements direct their flight. So they'll look, they'll see, they'll assess, and then they'll fly toward a particular space. And you can really see that when it's slowed down, how their heads move and direct their travel. And you can see how when they're navigating the airspace inside their habitat, they assess the glass by tapping it with their mandibles while they're in flight. So they'll come up, they'll tap the glass, they'll move a little further along the glass, they'll tap it again, they'll move to another pane of glass on the other side and tap that. So it seems in fast motion that they're bouncing all around, but in fact what they're doing is they're navigating their space and they're very intentionally tapping the glass to see what sort of limitations there are inside that airspace. November 7th, 2022. Flocks of birds migrating, stopping by the tall trees. You can hear them in the background, I'm sure. As you can see, our wasp feeder has uh, become quite the bee feeder today. Mostly honeybees here over the last couple of days. We we'll get the occasional yellow jacket German yellow jacket, mostly Vespula Germanica, but in general, it's become mostly a honeybee feeder, which is just fine. We certainly don't mind supporting the local bee population, but it's striking that uh, there's so few yellow jackets now, but there seems to be an increase in the bee population, at least in this month, as the weather gets colder. Here you see a German yellow jacket, Vespula Germanica arriving, but otherwise every other insect here is a honeybee. First, we captured one Vespula Germanica that we'll add to our Germanica habitat in the lab. We'll be trying to overwinter these few workers just to check their lifespan in captivity, see how long we can keep them alive. Normally they die off in the cold weather that's coming up fast here but we'll see how they do in captivity. In the meantime, this feeder is mostly honeybees this week. What we're gonna do now is add another Germanica that we just found at the feeder and captured out there. This is another female worker. We're gonna add that one to the habitat now. First, we have to wait for these to calm down a little bit. 
That way they won't fly out of the habitat during the transfer. So once the direct sunshine has moved away from the window, when the sun changes position, we'll be able to simply add this one into the habitat because they calm down automatically when the direct sun goes away for the day. Sometimes if they're just busy at the back of the habitat, which they usually are because that's the section that faces the uh, direct sun. If they're just hanging out back there in the back, we can open up the front and put our new Germanica specimen right in there with them. As long as they're not flying out toward the front of the habitat, that's usually doable. Looks like they're pretty calm at the moment, staying toward the back. So we'll go ahead and put our new one in. So you put the container into the habitat. As you can see, the new one's just sitting there assessing the situation. Pretty soon it'll go out and explore. Once it steps out of the container into the habitat, we'll just remove the container again. There we go, our new Germanica specimen just flew out of the temporary container. So now we can remove that from the habitat. Meanwhile, one of the others is down here having something to eat from the honey dish. November 7th, 2022, we just captured another Germanica female at the feeding station that is mostly attracting honeybees today. Honeybees, as you'll see, they don't actually die off in the winter. They just sort of cluster inside their hive and within the hive they stay together to keep themselves warm throughout the winter so they don't actually hibernate. Whereas our Germanica wasps, they'll die off in the winter time cold and only the queens will survive. She's fairly large compared to the average worker. So we're gonna introduce her into our habitat. So we'll see how that goes. She looks healthy enough, so we'll add her to our habitat in the research lab. Here's our latest addition to the Germanica habitat. Female, November 9th, 2022. So we changed up our feeding station today because the plastic was difficult to film. We needed some more open containers that were a little bit easier to deal with. Something a little more aesthetically pleasing to the eye was nice as well. So on the left here, we have honey inside the bird, the ceramic bird. In the green dish, we have Sprite and honey. And in the clear dish, we have Sprite. So we're interested to see which of these foods will be the most popular? Probably both. And we'll see how it goes. Our honey feeding station has attracted a Callistes fuscatus, it looks like. This is actually a cheap honey from the dollar store, which has a lot of corn syrup in it, as well as honey. And this Alistis wasp seems to love it. Looks like a Fuscatus. Finally had a little wasp come in. 
Looks like the German Vespula dramatica. We'll see if we can capture that one for our habitat. For now, the wasp is just out exploring. So our wasp has found their food source. So now we have one wasp and a whole bunch of honeybees. Our bee friends today are the numerous ones and they've been the most numerous all week. Most of the wasps are beginning to starve off for the season and die. But honeybees, they don't hibernate. They just cluster inside their nest and they're active all year round. In other words, they don't go to sleep for the winter. They just become less active and huddle around the queen and keep themselves warm in the hive. So the bees are fueling up to feed a hive, wherever that local feral hive is. I don't know of any beekeepers nearby, so I assume it's a feral hive, but you never know. Either way, there's only one wasp and there's been a dozen bees here today. So we went ahead and captured this Germanica wasp. We'll add it to our habitat that we have set up for the Vespula Germanica in the research lab. See if we can keep it alive for a while, longer than it would survive in the wild. Meanwhile, our bees are having a field day over here with all of the treats we put out for them. November 9th, 2022, we just captured another Germanica worker, female, out at the feeding station in the field lab. So we're gonna bring her in now into the interior research lab where we have the Vespula Germanica habitat already set up. And there's a few wasps in there already. They're sheltering below the items in the cage right now, but we'll go ahead and put her in there. Once they settle down a little bit, we'll pull the container back out. For now, they're a little excited because we opened it up stirred them up and added another one in there. But they'll calm down in a second here and then we'll pull that container back out. November 10th, 2022. Our wasp feeding station absolutely become a honeybee feeding station. favorite is the ceramic bird filled with bees. The bird is filled with honey and that's what's attracting them today.
November 10th, 2022. Here's a Germanica habitat in the research lab. We currently have one male and five females. Most of them captured here in the first 10 days of November. Some have already come through and died. Probably lost maybe four, four or five of them that we had captured have already died in the habitat. But these are thriving still. Meanwhile, in the second habitat, Polistes Dominula doing fine. Most of them are out today getting sun. November 10th, 2022, this yellow jacket is carrying around the head of another yellow jacket. Not sure if that's considered food or a trophy, or maybe they're just cleaning house. One of them had died or been killed by the others, it's unclear. But he decided that uh, he was gonna walk around with the head or she seems to be very excited It finally dropped the head of the other one. That was one of the unfortunates that didn't survive. But this one seems uh, pretty obsessed with the head and the parts of the other one. interesting behavior. Continues to fly around with it. We also lost another one. One of the workers, one of the females, has died. It's unclear how it died, if it was attacked or if it died naturally or what.
November 10th, 2022. Our feeder has attracted a Polistes. Looks like a Fuscatus, maybe. We'll try to capture that one for our overwinter habitat. Otherwise, it's all honeybees today, so far. Here we've captured the Polistes fuscatus specimen. So we'll bring that one into our habitat, see if we can overwinter it. Here's our Polistes fuscatus specimen that we just found at the feeder, surrounded by honeybees. We're gonna add this one to the third habitat today. This will become the Fuscatus habitat. Come on out, my friend. There we go. Welcome to your winter home, my friend. November 10th, 2022. Our Polistes fuscatus is getting settled in to the winter habitat we set up for it in the research lab. Our newest member of the Habitat Club, the Polistes fuscatus, has discovered the food sources available in the habitat, so that's always encouraging. Seems pretty comfortable as it gets settled in on its first day of captivity. November 10th, 2022, there's only one lonesome bee left. Otherwise, there's nothing left except ants. And every speck of honey that was in this bird dish is gone. It's like it was picked clean or washed or scrubbed clean. It's, it's amazingly clean. So the bees did an amazing job of eating up all that honey today. I think we might have to feed them again. So Polistes fuscatus is out exploring the habitat. It's November 11th, 2022. This one seems to be slowing down, but still healthy enough to get around. Yeah, he's got a bad front leg. The front left leg is not working right.
Yeah, it looks like Fuscatus. Alistis Fuscatus, Northern Paper Wasp. November 11th, 2022. This is the Vespula Germanica habitat. Still a number of them surviving. One of them has died. Another one has died. But most of them are still doing fine. What you see here is one male and five females. The male is the larger one up on the upper left. The rest are female workers. These were all captured in the first 10 days of November. This one is the male. You can tell because of his long droopy antenna and he has an extra long body because he has extra abdominal segments that the females don't have. As you can see, this group, the Vespula germanica, are quite active in their habitat, whereas the Polistes dominula, they're still not active at all. They're mostly hanging out up here, up in the corners of their habitat. Or down below underneath the bark and so forth they'll come out in the direct sunlight. Whereas the Germanica, they're kind of constantly active by comparison. November 12th, 2022. These are Vespula Germanica wasps. Who would not normally be alive this time of year. As you see, we have snow falling. So these wasps made it into the habitat just in time. Most likely if they were still outside this week, they would not survive. But in the safety and warmth of the habitat, you get to see yellow jackets in the snow. And that is a unique thing to see, which would not exist in nature.
November 13th, 2022, Vespula Germanica habitat. Active today. We still have at least four wasps alive in this habitat. One died overnight, but there's still three females and one male at least. This is the male. And here's the females. They're running around getting something to eat, taking the orientation flights getting some exercise today. Outside, most of our snow has melted off that we had overnight and yesterday. Beautiful November skies. Here's our Polistes fuscatus out and about today. Seems to be doing fine and acclimating well to captivity. November 14th, 2022. Turns out there's still six yellow jackets alive in this habitat. German yellow jackets. Vespula Germanica. This one appears to be the male. It's been hiding out below the bark today. Still in the high 30s, low 40s today outside. So these guys are having a nice warm experience instead of being outside where they would perish this time of year. They look pretty comfortable today. German yellow jackets, some of them still thriving, others about to die.
what you see here are two germanical wasps on the bottom of the frame that are in the process of dying and they've come down into the corner to be together while they die and then there's a healthy one that's clinging to the wood on the upper part of the frame and that one's just come down here too just to sort of be with the others And this behavior is interesting, the dying behavior. They become very sluggish and stop moving as much. And they kind of just put their head down. And they crawl off into a corner or underneath one of the shelter items. But the healthy one on the wood coming down to be with them is interesting. Makes you wonder if it's done intentionally because it knows the others are dying and it feels the need to be close. It's a lot we don't understand about the wasps and their minds and how their thought processes work how their instincts work. male is still alive, but maybe starting to slow down as well. Meanwhile, up on top our Polistes fuscatus is catching a little sun, hanging out on her bark, getting some rays today. Down on the lower right are the Minula are quiet today so far. They usually wake up a little later. They're up on the ceiling and down underneath their bark today. But they'll be out later when the sun raises the temperature in their habitat. November 14th, 2022, Polistes Dominula. This is the European paper wasps that were overwintering. We had about a dozen of them in this habitat. They've been laying low today because it hasn't been very sunny. But this one just kind of woke up and decided to do some flights. November 14, 2022. Our Polistes fuscatus is awake and active. You can see that front left foreleg is slightly damaged. So she has a little bit of a problem getting around, but she does okay.
November 15th, 2022. This is the Vespula Germanica habitat. German yellow jackets that we're overwintering as long as we can. And when we say overwintering with these yellow jackets, we really mean just a couple of weeks of extra life. That's about all they have really ever survive when we've attempted to keep them in captivity in the past. We typically see them dying within a few weeks max, usually less than that. Sometimes days, sometimes a couple of weeks, but it's never very long. Here you see one of them eating honey out of the feeding dish in the habitat. Overnight, we had two more die. Um, this one here you see in the corner. We saw it struggling yesterday when it crawled down into the corner with another one that was also struggling. That other one that is struggling is here and it died and is now in the center of the cage. So we still have a couple of German yellow jacket workers left, the female workers. And I believe the male is still alive. He may be underneath one of the coconut shells or the bark pieces today. There's no direct sun today because it's an overcast day. So they're mostly active in the sun when the sun hits the habitat directly. So we'll go in and we'll remove the two dead wasps today and we'll hope the others last for a little while longer. They've been good little roommates. This one's still very active today, and there's another that's pretty active today. November 15th, 2022, we just discovered the male. Vespula Germanica, German yellow jacket, is also deceased today. So overnight, we lost about three of them altogether. Typically they'll do this, they'll crawl into one part of the cage where they have some form of cover and they'll die in there. So at this point that leaves us with two or three survivors. And they're both female workers. Hopefully will remain with us for a little bit longer. So far, there's been several already gone, and uh, there's three more today. So we're going to go in today and collect them and bring them out. And we're going to show you that process. There's still a couple in there who are happy and comfortable feeding and flying around, exploring the cage. But um, these are short-lived insects, really, in general. So let's show you how we retrieve the bodies of the deceased and what we do with them at that point. So to begin with, when you're going to retrieve any of your deceased wasps from a habitat that still has some live ones active in it, like this one does, the bottom line is you have two options. You can wait until after sundown when they naturally will hunker down inside the bark in the coconut shell or whatever you have in the cage for comfort items and shelter items. They will go there at the end of the evening when there's no more natural light and they'll just immediately calm down as soon as the light goes away. And that allows you to just get in there and do what you have to do. Now, if you don't want to wait, then you simply have to be careful so that they don't fly out while you're working inside the habitat. And the way you do that is you wait until they're on the back part of the habitat where they tend to gravitate toward because that's where most of the light is. And while they're busy back in that part of the habitat, you just open up the door of the habitat and you pull them out. Right now they're 
a little too active to work with. So we still have three healthy, active Vespula germanica workers in the habitat. One currently exploring, one hanging out at the glass, and one up here chewing on the cage. They're the last survivors of our collected specimens. We lost three today, and those three will be collected here as soon as the others calm down for the evening. But they've been uh, enjoyable little friends. And we were glad to give them a few extra days of life. Had they been left outside, They'd be dead today because we had snow this week and a lot of freezing temperatures. And we'll see how it goes next week. It may warm up briefly next week before winter really settles in. But these ladies would have been gone earlier in the week had we not brought them into the habitat. So it's nice to have them here. This one just flew right into the door of the cage that would open up if we opened it. So we're going to wait for a little bit, and once they calm down a little bit more, we'll go ahead and get into the habitat. We just use tongs and a plastic tray of any kind. We use recycled food packaging as often as we can, just to give it some extra utility. And we use a vial. We put the specimens that die in the vial for later examination under the microscope cam and document their size comparisons and anatomy differences. In here so far, we have a queen. We have three female workers. And today we will add to that specimen container two more female workers that have died and one male worker that also died. And I, ultimately, that's what we wanted. Uh, when they did get through their natural lifespan, we wanted to have a queen, a male, and female workers to compare them and contrast them and be able to study them later on. So we'll have that now, which is good for the research side of things at least. So let's show you what we do to retrieve these bodies from the habitat. one more down in the corner. Okay, that was one of the female workers. And those are the ones we lost overnight. Once we have these out, what we like to do is examine them a little more closely. And we're just looking for any biological evidence of problems with their development or parasites, anything like that. We just take a look at them very closely. We also look at them underneath a microscope camera, and that allows us to see in detail 
all their anatomy and any issues that we see that look obvious, at least to the eye. Once we pull them out and examine them, and we transfer them into one of these, which is a glass vial that we put our specimens in. In that vial so far are some of the others that we had in this habitat who have already passed away. So we add them in. So now in this vial, we'll have a good collection of Vespula Germanica, including a queen, which you see are the largest one there on the bottom, a male, second largest, the one on the top, and the workers. So we'll be able to examine those up close later on when we show viewers the differences in size between these. Here we just refilled the water dish. It's November 15th, 2022. And right away the female worker came over to get a drink. So if anybody ever wonders how do wasps hydrate themselves? Yes, they do drink water directly. And for food, they eat liquid carbohydrates, usually nectar from flowers and things, but also food from humans and also honey. Sometimes they'll rob honey from beehives, but here we just feed them honey directly in their feeding dish. Sorry for the reflection, the light's a little bit challenging today. Mostly overcast today, so our Polistes dominula here have not come out much. They prefer a nice warm sun, and they usually stay sheltered in cooler, gray days. But we have one that peeked out to see what the light looked like today. But most of them are going to stay underneath the bark or occasionally up here in the corner. I like to cluster up here sometimes as well. Here's our Polistes fuscatus. She seems to be adapting well to captivity. Doing fine lately. As you may recall, this one has a damaged left forearm. That doesn't seem to be slowing her down. She seems to still be able to feed and groom and fly and climb in the cage, so so far, she's doing okay. Our Polistes fuscatus is out exploring today, doing a little bit of flying, getting some exercise. Good to see her active. She seems to be acclimating to the captive environment really well. Despite her weak left forearm, she has a bit of a deformity there, but she's still able to walk and get around okay and fly all right. But you can see how she struggles a little bit to hold on to the glass because of that one forearm that's not working quite right. But she adapts and gets along. November 16th, 2022, Vespula Germanica. We still have three live specimens in this habitat. They're very active, flying around, eating well. Seem to be in good health.
Our Vespula Germanica specimens are still kicking. We still have three in the habitat that seem alive and well. Very active today, taking their morning flights. We just opened up their blinds in front of their window, show them the light coming in. It's overcast today, but all three of them are active as the natural light comes into their habitat. These are the last three surviving Germanica specimens that we kept over from 2022 season. So we hope they last a bit and we're documenting the length of their lifespan and captivity here at the end of the season. In nature, of course, these three would be dead by now. Obviously there's snow outside. It's winter now and temperatures would have killed them in the environment. But we were able to allow them to live a little bit longer here inside the research habitat. So hopefully they'll be with us for a while. The average lifespan on these is usually just measured in weeks, a couple of weeks, sometimes longer, but we'll see how they do. And we'll let you know. As you can see, the habitat glass is starting to get a little splattery. And this is common, especially with German yellow jackets. We've seen that this Vespula Germanica, they get pretty splattery. They throw a lot of their body fluids around while they're flying and while they're climbing on the glass. Most of it's waste, some of it's venom, just natural body fluids. So every now and then we have to wipe down the glass after they calm down for the night and go back under their shelter pieces here. We'll wipe down the glass. November 17th, 2022, our Polistes fuscatus, female, is out and about today in her habitat. It's a pretty day, snow on the ground, snow in the air, some light flurries out there. She seems to be thriving in captivity, like we've seen many other Polistes do in the past. Looking out on a snowy day. She's looking out on a world of snow that usually most wasps of her species would never see. Makes you wonder what her, whatever it is, makes of this sky with white stuff falling down landing on the ground. 
and she sees all this outside her window. Makes you wonder what's on her mind. November 18th, 2022. We still have three live and active Vespula Germanica in our habitat. They seem to be doing fine. They look healthy. They're flying. They're active. Just to change up their food regimen, we put a piece of apple into the habitat. So far, none of them have engaged with it. It's only been in there for a couple of minutes. Only one has even noticed it and seemed to ignore it. Here you see them engage in truffle axis where they produce fluid and share that. November 18th, 2022, our Polistes fuscatus, female, doing fine in captivity. She's out for a stroll in her cage, hanging out on her bark today. Just grooming, relaxing. Looks like she's waving at us. Going through a grooming routine on her bark. There's a snowy day outside.
November 19th, 2022, Vespula Germanica. Three female workers active in the habitat. Trophallaxis is happening between a couple of them. So they're communicating pretty regularly. And they're flying well and seem otherwise healthy. It's a chilly day around 20 degrees with snow. It's sunny and beautiful. Beautiful sunny day. November 20, 2022. Three of our Vespula Germanica workers, females, are still alive and well. Feeding, exploring the cage, flying. Seem to be doing just fine. There's still three of them alive and well in the habitat. They're out for their morning flights. We just opened up the windows and there's natural sun. Snowy day outside today. Cold but clear and beautiful. All the wasps are out today, November 21st, 2022. We have Dominula flying and our Polistes Fuscatus flying and our Vespula Germanica are flying. They're responding very positively to the sunlight coming into the habitats today. It's very bright and sunny outside, even though it's cold and snowy on the ground. 
It's quite beautiful today with clear skies, warm sun, and that always sets the wasps into flight. It gets them quite active. Nice to see our Polistes fuscatus flying. She seems pretty happy today. November 21st, 2022. We still have two active Germanica workers today. Not sure if the third one is still with us, but it hasn't come out yet today. This is Trophallax is happening between the Germanica German yellow jackets. That's a mouth-to-mouth -mouth fluid exchange and antenna communication. Usually one solicits and the other gives fluids. It's part of their communication and part of their dominant structure. It's a very complex process. We still have three Vespula Germanica. They're all in the habitat today, out running around. or down here feeding. November 21st, 2022, our Polistes Dominula are coming out today to enjoy the sun. It's a beautiful sunny day, chilly, but pretty outside. Still some snow on the ground out there. But the sun is exciting the Polistes Dominula and they're coming out to say hello. Meanwhile, up top, our Polistes Fuscatus friend seems to be doing fine today. She came out to get some sun as well. Here are the Polistes Dominula. First, 2022, this is our Polistes fuscatus coming down to get some honey out of the honey feeder. November 22nd, 2022. Our wasp habitats are busy today. Lots of sunshine. Most of the wasps are out today catching some sun. They're doing a lot of orientation flights, responding to the sunlight and the habitat. Vespula Germanica habitat. Sunny, warm day outside. Still some snow on the ground, but in the 40s, the high 40s today so far. Very sunny. So inside the habitat, the Germanica are very active today. Mm 
This is the Vespula germanica habitat. We still have three very active female workers in this habitat. Seem to be healthy and acclimated to captivity pretty well. They're flying quite a bit today inside the habitat with all the direct sun. November 22nd, 2022. Our Polistes fuscatus is out getting some sunshine today. Seems healthy and well acclimated still to captivity. November 23rd, 2022. We still have three Germanica workers surviving in the habitat. They're out for flights today. Seem to be healthy. Thanksgiving Day 2022. Looks like we lost another one of the Germanica overnight. You see this one is uh, standing by the other that had passed away. But we still have two that are active and healthy. November 25th, 2022, we still have two Germanica. Here's one having some honey breakfast. And the other is over here doing some climbing and some flying today.
Vespula germanica, their habitat, they're still kicking. We have two female workers still alive and active that appear healthy. November 28th, 2022. We still have some very active female Germanica workers here. There's still two in the habitat that appear to be healthy and active. Not flying much today as it's not very sunny yet. They're just getting started this morning. We still have two active Vespula Germanica workers in the habitat. Vespula Germanica habitat. We still have two healthy looking female workers surviving. They're both on the glass at the moment. They usually take shelter this time of night. The sun's gone down, it's after 6 p.m. So this is somewhat unusual behavior for them. November 30th, 2022, Vespula Germanica. We still have two female workers in the habitat. Vespula Germanica. One worker waking up in the morning. Looks like we lost the second Vespula Germanica worker. One is still alive. That's our last sole survivor for this habitat. December 1st, 22. Here's our Polistes for Scottis catching some sun, coming through the habitat. It's a cold day in upstate Indiana. It's 20s or 30s outside today. December 3rd, 2022, our last surviving Vespula Germanica specimen, the female worker, still appears healthy. The last one she was with died yesterday. So now she is our sole survivor. Meanwhile, our Polistes Dominula are starting to wake up in the morning sun, doing their morning yoga, stretches and exercises. December 5th, 2022, our last surviving Germanica worker is still here. Our last surviving Germanica worker getting some breakfast at the honey dish.
December 6, 2022. We still have one Vespula Germanica worker. Seems to be doing fine in the habitat. Still able to fly and get around pretty well. She is a little worker. Seems to have the most longevity of everyone we put in the habitat this season for overwintering. December 7th, 2022. Vespula Germanica. Still have one worker. Just waking up in the morning. What's up, my cardinal friend? Looks like you found yourself a tasty little berry bush. It's December 7th, 2022. Our wasps are safe and warm inside their habitats. This is the Germanica habitat. Notice how it's getting a little splattery on the glass. Let's compare that down here to the Polistes, which remain pretty clean. That's very characteristic of the Germanica. Their, their habitats get a little bit splattery compared to Polistes. So they usually take a little bit more maintenance. December 8th, 2022, our Vespula Germanica worker is still alive and seems to be thriving. She is the sole survivor of the Vespula Germanica that we have overwintered. December 9th, 2022. Our sole surviving Germanica worker is still alive. It's a rainy day today, cool out. December 9th, 2022. Cold, rainy day in the high 30s outside. We have one last Vespula Germanica still alive. This behavior where they, rather than take shelter, which they normally would down underneath the shelter items in the habitat, they'd normally go down under there when uh, on a cold, rainy day. This one's just sitting on the glass facing the light. And that is often dying behavior, where they just want to spend the last of their energy near the light. So this one could be dying. It's not unusual that uh, at the end of their lives, they just face the light and hang on the glass on their last day of life or so kind of taking in whatever light there is to be taken in before they die. And they get very still. December 10th, 2022. Vespula Germanica. Still with us this morning. December 10th, 2022. Polistes Ruscatus. Waking up in the morning.
December 11th, 2022. Looks like our last Vespula Germanica worker is now deceased. So that brings to an end the 2022 Vespula Germanica habitat. We had about a dozen or so we brought in from late October through now, December 11th, and they are now all deceased. Meanwhile, down in the other habitats, we still have active polistes, and those are doing just fine. They're quiet now because it's evening, so they're all hiding under their bark and whatnot, but uh, for the most part, they're doing fine. So today we're going to retrieve the last of the deceased Vespula Germanica. We're going to put that right into a container that holds the rest of them. <laughs> 